Just over a year ago, I started my one-handed woodworking adventure and my YouTube channel, and I was making things like these. Now, just over a year on, is it possible for me to make something like this? Well, I suppose there's only one way to find out. And hello again and welcome back to my channel. Today is the start of a huge adventure for me, which is gonna be a series of videos documented over the summer to construct my own workshop. Okay, if you have followed the channel, it is following the same principles, starting off very smallly with my cold storage bin. And then we moved on to the bike stroke storage shed. And now the workshop just on a much bigger scale. Now, just a little bit of an exclusive on the channel. From September, I have decided in my real world job to drop down to part time to dedicate myself to becoming a maker. Now, in the middle of a global pandemic and the world's worst recession we've ever seen, this is going to be an interesting adventure and an interesting step in my life. But as the last few years have shown me, I am up for a challenge, okay? And I am really, really looking forward to this. Simple concept with the workshop being that I've completely outgrown the garage. It was only really a temporary starting out thing anyway. It's got an asbestos roof, uh, it leaks everywhere, it's freezing in the winter and it's boiling hot on a day like today. So I've decided if I'm really gonna make a go of this as a small part-time business, then I'm going to need my own area, which is going to be my own workshop. Now I'll take you outside and I'll show you in a minute. Just before I take you outside to show you around, I just want to give you a little bit of a background into the idea of a modular design for something like a workshop because it's twofold for someone like myself. Firstly, uh, the property where we live, uh, we've rented here, been here for quite a few years now. I've got a fantastic landlord, but if you're going to invest quite a chunk of money into something like a workshop or a garden room, the modular concept allows you to construct it but also to take it down if you needed to. And secondly, which is probably more important for me, is only, obviously you know this, but mostly by now, only working with the one arm, It the modular idea allows me to work at my own pace so I can construct pieces or modules in sections in my own time, all right, and if I get too tired or if it's too much pain, then I can just stop. And then I can go back to it and just build it in sections like a flat pack house, all right? So I'm gonna build it in sections and when it's ready and when the base is ready and the um, platform for it to go on is ready, then I can start to assemble it, which should be the relatively easy bit as it was with the bike shed as you saw it. Now, before I talk you around some design ideas and just show you some really basic stuff, I'm gonna take you outside, show you where the um, intended plot for it is, and then I'll bring you back in and I've got a few questions uh, for you guys as well. So let's go and have a look.
Well, I hope you enjoyed a little guided tour of the back garden there, which also doubles up as a bit of a nature reserve, as you can see. Now, today's video, I'm just going to be talking a little bit about on how I intend to do the foundations and the base and also how to construct the modular walls. I will be talking in feet and inches, but I will put the equivalent of meters along the bottom. The reason for me doing this is really that the boards come in eight by four. Uh, so it's still in old money, if you like. So it's easier for me to talk that way in regards to the actual square footage of the building. And also, it's a bit easier um, when talking about eight foot high down to the backs, which is going to be six foot six. Now, the actual dimensions of the base is going to be 24 foot by 12, which is just the right size to fit in in the space that I've allocated. It is going to be two and a half meters away from the boundary wall, which allows me to go up to three meters high in terms of height on the permitted development rules. Now, this video is not going to be talking about permitted development. If you'd like to know more about that, and I will leave a link in the description, please go and visit Ali Dymox uh, Garden Room Build channel because it is absolutely fantastic the level of detail that guy goes into is phenomenal so if you want to know more about permitted development please head over to his channel but all i know is if i'm two and a half meters away from the boundary wall i know i can go up to three meters on a single pitch roof in height now i'm going to show how i intend to do the foundations through a little bit of a modeling design just to talk you through that and then I'll talk you a little bit through the modular walls and that will conclude today's video. OK, so let's have a little look about how I plan on doing the foundations. OK, bear with me on this, but this tub is going to represent actually digging down into the ground. So we're going to go approximately about 12 inches down. After completing that, through the representation of this dog poo bag, I'm going to lay down a damp proof membrane okay so as you can see into the ground there with a damp proof membrane all right and then the next idea is to put a layer of sand on top of the damp proof membrane obviously not letting it leak in like that so we put a layer of sand down and flatten that down not too much and then finally over the top represented by this old fish pond stuff we're going to put in some gravel to bring it up to ground level and then with a rake we're going to get it level and that is the plan which is i think a cheaper and better alternative to concrete to get the foundation sorted. Now, apologies about the lighting in that little model making section there, but I hope you get the idea of how I plan to build the foundation. Now, I'm very lucky in the sense that one of my neighbours runs a garden design company and have very kindly agreed to come and dig the foundation out for me at some point because they've got all the... Uh, substantial diggers and stuff to do that so it might take them a couple of hours which would probably take me several weeks anyway that's um so the foundation i think is a good way i'm not too keen on doing a concrete base but that's just a personal thing so i think this is actually a better alternative for for getting it nice and level now the actual wooden frame the wooden base is not going to be sitting on this i'm going to be ordering a set of of these now i got this idea from matt at back badger workshop and his series of workshop build videos i saw these and immediately caught my eye i think they look absolutely fantastic they are adjustable in height in case it's slightly out of level and also it gets that slight raise off the ground which allows air to flow underneath and obviously stops the wood frame from rotting now then, I'm just going to show you a little bit about my uh, very, very basic up to the moment SketchUp design. This is my first attempt at using SketchUp, um, so I'm trying to get to grips with it. I'll take you onto the screen now and show you my design ideas for the wooden base and also for the modular walls. As you can see, here, this is my really straightforward design for the timber framed base. Um, it's the original design this because I originally planned for it to be 20 foot in length by 12 foot 
but financially said I can stretch just that little bit more. So we're actually going to go for 24 foot in length. So where there's half a board cut here, it'd actually be a full board. And then underneath, we're going to have treated six by twos, which I've only got one set of joinings here, but they will go right across the frame. On underneath as well, we will have the Kingspan 50 mil insulation. So we can insulate the floor exactly the same as we'd be doing with the roof and the walls. Okay, so that's the base. Let's have a little look at the actual modular walls themselves. And you can see the simple design here are just of the modular construction of the walls. Now the front ones represent, they are a full board, so that's eight foot high, uh, four foot wide, and it's lined with treated three by two timber with a supporting batten in the middle. And as we move around the sides, you can see as it just drops down the actual back Panels are going to be six foot six, which gives us the angle dropping down. Now here we'll have a full panel that's four foot wide, and then this one's four foot wide. Now this final panel, because the side panels are fitting inside, where you can see the front panel and the back panel, this one is going to have to be trimmed slightly in its length. The actual boards themselves are 11 mil OSB. If we take it round to have a quick look at the back, and I'll probably be planning to put an additional support button around about six foot high going across the back. So when it comes to hanging any tools or having to support something on the wall, it'll be easier that way. So it's not resting just on the OSB board themselves. Now this one will be for 8, 12, 16, 20. So I need an additional board on this because this was my original design. And if it take you around, show you the same around the side. And the space at the front at the moment is not fully decided. My plan is probably, I'm looking around Facebook Marketplace or on eBay as well, to look for a patio style or a French style UPVC door, which would allow me, give me that extra width, moving stuff into and out of the workshop as opposed to just using the standard door itself. If I move round to this side, which will be the south facing side, it's not here yet, but I, also, I have actually procured three of these which were out of a Premiership footballer's skip. And yes, I did ask the builder for permission. He was getting quite a substantial uh, extension done on the house and these were basically brand new. I thought, oh, I'll have a little bit of that. And he says, help yourself. So we'll have three smaller windows here, which will be uh, south facing. And then the actual main part here, there'll probably be an additional module going in there. And then some form of a larger French type door uh, going into the actual workshop itself. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. The issue I've got, which I'm just going to bring back to me at the moment, is in regards to the Kingspan uh, insulation, which would be going into here. I'll bring it back to me so it's a little bit easier to explain face-to-face -face and ask if you could possibly give me some help regarding some design ideas. Yeah, so that's just a really basic overview of the design concept of this modular design for a garden room or for a workshop. Um, in terms of the actual design process and the, and the making of it, if you look at my shared build, uh, I'm really happy with that, how that turned out. Okay, it's absolutely rock solid. It was straightforward for me to make. It was relatively straightforward to put up. And this is just that basically but on a much bigger scale. Question I have got, though, is in regards to the insulation. And I'm hoping somebody out there might be able to help me with it. The insulation itself, which is going to be the 15 mil Kingspan, is going to have to go in after the modules, after the boards have been put up. Uh, so if I look at, say, something like this as an example, all right, just a quick mock-up here. So I've got, there's the 11 mil OSB and there's the 3 by 2 The black line represents where uh, the width of the Kingspan. So there's not enough room for me to secure the fixings in because I want them to go in in the middle. So they'll have to be fixed to each other. And then the kings, uh, the um, the insulation, the kingspan itself, or whatever I can get my hands on the same stuff, will have to then go in after. Now the issue that then arises is this: I will be putting it in, fitting it in, and the foil side will be up against the OSB, but I won't be able to use the aluminium foil to secure it to the inside of the wood. Now I've seen this on numerous uh, garden room builds is that provides an extra barrier uh, for moisture leaving uh, and escaping and has that got a potential for it to cause rot in the structure now i will be able to add some aluminium tape between the osb boards on the inside of the frame if you can see it on these lines here 
and then I can put um, a piece of hardwood over the top of that, which might give it a bit of a feature for the inside. So I can line that with aluminium tape, but I can't line the inside of the Kingspan insulation with tape because obviously it's already all secured to each other. Now, will that create a problem? There will be an air gap between the insulation and the exterior uh, wall. And I'm planning on wrapping the whole thing in Tyvek before applying the exterior cladding. I haven't decided on the cladding yet because I've still got the guys at uh, Reclaim Timber Liverpool who are um, trying to source me something, you know, I'm still, well, they've some various ideas they're coming up with. So I haven't decided what the external cladding is going to be yet. So I have got the internal board. I have got the 50 mil insulation. I have got an air gap. It will have a wrap of uh, the Tyvek stuff around it and then it'll have the exterior cladding. But I'm just a little bit worried that on the inside, as I've just said, won't be sealed with aluminium foil. Do you force, if I, uh, do you foresee that being possibly being a problem? If I actually cut the um, Kingspan so it's really tight fitting, will that be enough? Uh, or if you've got an alternative su suggestion, please let me know. All right, that's it for the end of today's video, guys. Um, it's just a basic outlay of my plan. You've seen what I want to put it. You've seen my basic modular design. Uh, you've seen my plan for the foundations and for the floor. The floor itself was going to be 18 mil ply. Uh, I forgot to mention that before. Uh, in the comments below, any suggestions, please, uh, or any recommendations. If you think I've missed something, then please let me know because as I say, it's still in the design stage. I've started building some of the back uh, the six foot six um, modules. So I have started the actual manufacturing stage, if you like. But if you have seen anything or you think, oh God, he's missed that. Or have you thought of this? There's still potential for design ideas to change. So I'd appreciate any input that you've got out there. You know, you guys have been fantastic in providing feedback for me in the past. This is the big one. All right, for me, this is the big one. So thanks very much for, for listening and for watching. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon and look after yourselves. Thank you.